Good evening, family. The 100th Psalm, verses 4 and 5 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Good evening, family. My name is Joseph Manaway. I have the incredible privilege of serving as youth and young adult pastor here at Mount Calvary Baptist Church. And I just want to take a moment and thank you all so much for tuning in. This is the third and final night of our fall revival. If you were like me and you tuned in one night or both nights uh, that have previously taken place, you have been richly blessed. And I'm looking forward to what God is going to say to us tonight. Now, listen, we can't be selfish with this. So if you're going to be blessed or if you know you're going to be blessed, if you know God has a word just for you, I want you to share the link. Or, or if you're on Facebook, uh, in the comment section, tag at least three people. Let them know that revival has begun and let's see what God is going to say to us tonight. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, we love you for another opportunity to virtually enter into your house. Lord, we thank you for bringing us to another Thursday night. It was no guarantee uh, that when we saw Sunday that we would see Thursday. So just uh, we just want to say thank you for letting us see tonight. Lord, we thank you for your manservants who have a ward in the spirit and brought words of uh, comfort and encouragement and enlightenment. And God, we pray now for Dr. Watson. We thank you for this man of God. And I pray now that you touch him, God, and give him a word that's just for us. Break up the fallow grounds of our hearts that we may be able to receive what you have given him. God, thank you for our church. Thank you for our pastor. Continue to bind us closer together, God, and meet somebody at the point of their need tonight. And we consider it and claim it all done in the darling name of Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. Amen. Well, praise the Lord to my Mount Calvary family there in Fairfield, California, with Dr. Clavin Lee. Always a pleasure, man, to join forces with you. And I'm honored to be musical guest for the fall revival this year. So my job is to usher us into the very presence of God. Let's get to it. Come on. Now listen, sometimes in life, you got to thank God for what did not happen. Y'all feel me on it? Because when you get on the other side of that situation, you can say like I say, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, and His mercy endures to all generations. Come on, clap it up, clap it up. Thank you so much for your grace. Your favor brought me all the way. And if it has not been for you, don't know what I do. Thank you, Lord. Hey. Thank you, Lord. 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 For your grace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your favor, it brought me, and if it had not been, been for your mercy, even your grace, all of my sins wouldn't be erased, no greater love than from above, so amazing, and I won't stop praising. Thank you. Hey, gotta take time and say, even on this day, yeah. Thank you, Lord. You've been mighty good. Hey, oh yeah. Now just look at somebody real quick. Say grace, unmerited favor. Hey. Say this again. Shake your neighbor, say grace. Say grace. Say grace. Whoa. 
I said, Jesus came, Ray. I merited fame. When he gave his life, he removed all strife. Tragedies, they're a common place. All kind of diseases. People are slipping away. But as for me, I can truly say, it was right. Hey, hey, if it had not been, no, no, what I would do. Thank you, Lord, for you. Thank you for your grace. Yeah. Listen, if it wasn't for. of God Woo. I want to talk to somebody out there who in the midst of this pandemic you had your back against the wall and it may have looked like you were gonna fall but just in the nick of time those twins called grace and mercy snatched you out of the hand of the enemy and you're still here can I tell you why you're still here it was nothing it was nothing it was nothing it was nothing but the nothing but the, the grace grace of God of God can I tell you what it did it brought me it taught me kept me and never left me the grace grace of God I'm living and moving and breathing because of the grace the grace of God listen death could have come during the night and it could have taken me away but I'm still here the grace, grace of God. Many years have come and gone, but you never left me alone. And I thank you, I praise you. Hey, 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 hey. The grace, grace of God. If it had not been for the Lord that was on my side. Good evening, everyone. We give thanks to God for another blessed opportunity to gather. I pray that you feel like the psalmist, because I certainly do. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endureth forever. And so I greet you in the mighty and magnificent, miraculous name of our master, our Messiah, Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. Well, we're at the last night of our spiritual renewal for the week. And I'm grateful to God for Reverend Dr. Jerry M. Carter Jr. and Reverend Dr. William Houston Curtis. And tonight we are going to be blessed yet again for our third and final night of word and worship. I'm delighted to share again with our congregation and with all of you the preaching ministry of the Reverend Dr. Maurice Watson. Dr. Watson is the senior pastor of the Metropolitan Church in Largo, Maryland, and God has blessed him in unique ways throughout his ministry, and God continues to bless him and honor him for his faithfulness and his 
dutifulness to the call of God upon his life. He has multiple degrees. He's published. He's a speaker at conferences and revivalist and so many things all around the world. And I'm grateful to God for him and for his family. And I pray God's continued blessings upon him. He's such a dear friend and one of my older brothers in the ministry uh, who has really just looked out for me. And I'm grateful to God for him and the impact that he has made and continues to make upon my life and our friendship. I want you to be prayerful even now that God will speak to your heart. There is a word from the Lord. And so let's hear it from God's vessel for this night, the Reverend Dr. Maurice Watson, Senior Pastor of the Metropolitan Baptist Church in Largo, Maryland. Hear ye the word of the Lord. God wants to heal you everywhere you hurt. Listen, God wants to heal you everywhere you hurt. Everywhere you hurt, God will see you through. He'll take the pain away. God wants yes. to heal you. I know it does. Everywhere you hurt. He sees it today. God will. He will. Listen, he's also a provider. He will provide for you. Each and every day. So lift your hand and say, Lord, I need you. I need you right away, yeah. I know we will each and every day. He's Jehovah Jireh. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I need you. Hallelujah. God will. Come on, as a corporate body, just make that declaration. Everywhere. You heard, yes. Everywhere, Everywhere you heard, God will see you through. He's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. He's faithful, yes, he is. Each and every day. So lift your hands and say, Lord, I need. Now sometimes you gotta be radical like the woman with the issue of blood. She just reach out and touch. Oh God. Him of Him of his God. Oh, and his blood. And his blood. Woo. It will, will make you whole. Listen. Oh, it is Jesus. Yeah. Yes, it is Jesus. If you're wondering who's healing you, it's Jesus. Yeah. In my soul. In my soul. Oh, I have to Can I tell you why she reached out to touch him? He was wounded for your transgression. Oh, I have to he was bruised for our iniquity. Oh, I Have you ever been touched by it? Have you ever been healed by it? Yeah! After all these years, the blood still has miraculous power. Lift your hands in the air. Decree and declare. Yeah! Yeah, you hold. Listen. In this season, a thousand may fall at your side. 
and 10,000 at your right hand, but that's not going to be your testimony. Prophesy to somebody and say, God's going to heal you. God's going to heal you. Hey, God's going to heal you. Help me say, God's going to heal you. God's going to heal you. From the crown of your head God's gonna heal you. to the sole of your feet. God's going to heal you. Every infirmity. God's going to heal you. Do you believe it? Yes, I believe it. Do you receive it? Yes, I receive it. I said, do you believe it? Yes, I believe yeah, it. Do you receive it? Yes, I receive it. Say yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to see you through. Take the pain away. He will provide for you each and every day. Here's all you have to do. Lift your hands and say, I need you, I need you, I need thee every hour. Now what I need you to do is just build an altar right wherever you are and just start calling on the name that's above every other name he's getting ready to respond to you surely he's seen the affliction of his people and while you cry out to him we command every organ and every tissue in your body to function in god's perfection come on believe it and receive it yes believe it yes receive it we speak to the red blood cells and the white blood cells and we say, be healed, be healed. May we pray. Our Father and our God, we are thankful again for your goodness and grace and mercy that you've extended to us and for this wonderful privilege that is ours to assemble ourselves together in a collective and corporate way to worship you and to praise you once again. We confess our many sins before you, Lord. We pray you'd forgive us. Cleanse us even now from all unrighteousness. Now, God, as I stand to proclaim your word, I pray for a fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit. Use me now in such a way that everything I do and say will only be done and said so that you will receive the glory. We ask it all through Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, this is indeed is the day the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord on tonight? I am certainly happy and thankful to be once again at the Mount Calvary Baptist Church and I certainly want to express my thanks and appreciation to the angel of this house the shepherd of this flock the pastor of this church my friend and brother your pastor Dr. Claiborne Lee thank you Dr. Lee for this wonderful invitation to come and share with you and the great people of the Mount Calvary Church amen Mount Calvary I know I don't have to tell you what you already know how blessed you are to have a, a, a pastor and a preacher and a person of the caliber and kind as Dr. Claiborne Lee, one of the great voices in our nation. And I want to again say how honored I am for the invitation and particularly for the friendship uh, that we share with one another. There is a word that I'd like to share with you on uh, tonight. It is found in Psalm 118, one of the messianic psalms of the Old Testament. Psalm 118, and I want to read into your hearing verses 19 through 29. Psalm 118, verses 19 to 29. I know that's a long text, but we need to read the Bible more, don't we? Amen, amen. I'm reading from the New King James Bible. If you found it, might you indicate as such by saying amen. Here's how my Bible reads. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go through them, and I will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous shall enter. I will praise you for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. 
This was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I pray, O Lord, O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord, and he has given us light. Bind a sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, I will exalt you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Look again. Uh, at verse 24, we recite it all the time. Here it is. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. When you look at your neighbor, uh, uh, even in your homes and, or wherever you may be, and tell him or her, it's still the day. It's still the day. It's still the day. There are some days that are etched on the hard drive of our memory. Events that we will never forget. For some, it is December the 7th, 1941, the day Japan attacked Pearl Harbor. President Roosevelt described it as a day that would live in infamy. For others, it is the events that happened on November the 22nd, 1963, and April the 4th, 1968, the dates on which President John F. Kennedy and Martin Luther King Jr. were assassinated are days that you'll never forget. More recently, the tragic events of September the 11th, 2001 will never leave our memory. Many of us can remember the joy and excitement that we experienced on November the 4th, 2004, when Barack Obama was elected the 44th president, president of the United States. For some of you, your unforgettable day is your wedding day. For others, it is the births of your children. These, friends, are days that contain memories that are hardwired on our minds and they will live with us until the day we die. The ancient nation of Israel observed feasts in which they were also required to remember important days in their history. One of them was known as the Feast of Tabernacles. During this feast, the people of God would make a pilgrimage to the temple in Jerusalem where they were to remember God's provisions for their forefathers and mothers during their exodus from uh, Egypt and their exile from Babylon. These friends were considered as unforgettable events in the life and history of the people of Israel, uh, and they gathered together during the Feast of Tabernacles in order to give thanks to God for God's faithfulness. Psalm 118 is a thanksgiving liturgy, that was sung during the Feast of Tabernacles. The worshiping congregation sang this psalm antiphonally with one choir answering another. This psalm is believed to have been Martin Luther, the great reformer's favorite psalm. And it is also considered to be the hymn that Jesus and his disciples sang at the end of the Passover meal in the upper room on the night that he was betrayed by Judas. The writer says that when, at the end of the meal, that when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Some scholars believe that the hymn that they sang that night was that they sang Psalm 118. The psalm pictures a worshiping throng of people in procession marching to the temple in Jerusalem. It opens in verses 1 and 29 with a call to thanksgiving. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. These words would serve not only as the theme of this magnificent psalm, but also as fitting bookends that would call the people of God to remember God's goodness and to rejoice in light of God's saving actions. In verses 5 through 18, a king or a liturgist uh, is, is, encourages the congregation to remember how when death and disaster seemed imminent 
upon their forefathers and mothers in Egypt and in Babylon, but God stepped in on each and every occasion and, 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 and turned their situation around. Now, we come to verse 19, and when we come to verse 19, the crowd has now arrived at the gate of the temple. So now the king sings on behalf of the waiting congregation his part in verse 19. He says, open to me the gates of righteousness and I will go through them. Some believe that the gate that he refers to, the eastern gate to the temple. In verse 20, the gatekeepers, the priests respond antiphonally. They're singing back and forth. Respond in verse 20. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous shall enter. In other words, only the righteous can enter these gates or as the psalmist said he who has clean hands and a pure heart once inside the gate then the king speaking on behalf of the worshiping assembly stated yet again his reason for being there he says I will praise you for you uh, uh, have answered me and have become my salvation and then after the congregation enter if you will into the temple finally in verses 20 to and following the congregation began to sing their part and in a public act of worship they stated in an antiphonal fashion their corporate responsibility to remember God's goodness and to rejoice in light of his saving actions on that high watermark day of the feast of tabernacles they declared this is the day the Lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it that day had been and set aside as a national feast and they worship God because of his goodness as they saw it friends only God could make that day happen for them so they said we will rejoice and be glad in it I submit to you today that while that, 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 that while that day of remembrance is a day that should not be relegated solely to the events of Israel's past no like Israel we also have reasons to rejoice. We can likewise look back over our lives and the many expressions of God's goodness and grace and declare with Israel, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. In other words, it's still the day. That day has not changed. It's still the day when we ought to rejoice and remember God for his goodness. While as New Testament believers, that day has not been codified as a national feast. Make no mistake about it. It's still the day when we ought to rejoice. While our circumstances may not be the same as Israel, our reasons for rejoicing have not changed. No, friends, it's still the day when we ought to rejoice and give the Lord praise. I submit to you that Israel's example for us it shows a us today uh, a, a, a fitting example of why we ought to rejoice and be glad on this day. I submit to you today that it's still the day to rejoice because first of all, this is the day to remember how God reversed our predicament. This is the day to remember how God reversed our predicament. As the congregation are, sang their part and responded, they responded with this proverb or well known a wise saying in verse 22. They said the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This proverb depicts in a graphic picture the great reversal of their predicament. When their forefathers and mothers were surrounded by enemies down in Egypt and over in Babylon, later in Babylon, they looked, if you will, like worthless stones that the builders or masons would throw away as unfit. But God stepped into their situation and reversed the situation and made 
Israel, the chief cornerstone, the capstone, the keystone, the most important stone that holds everything else in the building together. That stone that had been rejected represented Israel uh, at her point of death until the Lord stepped in and turned things around and made them the chief cornerstone. Continuing their part, singing their part, the congregation said of that miraculous reversal of their circumstances in verse 23, for this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. I want to remind someone today that it's still the day when we ought to rejoice because like Israel, many of us know what it feels like to, and ex to experience God step in to our situation and turn things around. Like Israel, many of us know what it feels like to be rejected, to be treated like stones that the builders throw away as unfit, to be rejected, if you will. For some, you know the pain of rejection, the rejection of being put up for adoption in your uh, by a biological parent. Others know that pain as having been qualified for a job, but you were overlooked and they gave the job to someone less qualified than you. Others know the pain of being madly in love with someone, but they broke your heart because they rejected you and left you for someone else. And every one of us perhaps knows the pain of being rejected on the basis of the color of our skin. But regardless of the reason, rejection hurts. I said rejection hurts. And it causes a person to uh, question their self-worth and to um, uh, ask uh, questions of themselves like, what's wrong with me? Am I not good enough? Am I not pretty enough? Am I too skinny? Am I too fat? Am I not smart enough? But friends, the good news of this text is that God can take the rejects, the throwaways, the stones that the builders rejected and turn things around and make them the chief cornerstone. It is said that in the days of Michelangelo, there was in Florence, Italy, a, 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 an 18-foot slab of marble that none of the other sculptors or artists would have anything to do with that slab of marble because they considered it to be inferior in quality. Michelangelo studied the slab and said to the curators, give the slab of marble to me. And from a stone that had been rejected, Michelangelo uh, 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 sculptured, if you will, perhaps the most beautiful sculpture in world history, his sculpture of King David. From a stone that had been rejected, he created a masterpiece. And is that not a picture in miniature of the gospel? Ephesians 2 says of you and me that we are God's workmanship, that word literally means masterpiece created uh, 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 by, uh, in Christ Jesus unto good works. That God took rejects like you and me with all of our faults and all of our flaws and all of our failures and made us his masterpiece and he included us in his salvific purposes. I submit to you friends that the, that the chief example of this rejection rejected stone was our Lord Jesus Christ. He also knew the pain of rejection. Hundreds of years before he was born in Bethlehem, the prophet Isaiah said of him that he was despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. John the apostle said of him in his gospel that he came unto his own, but his own did not receive him. The religion religious leaders of Jesus' day rejected him, but Jesus didn't allow the opinions of his opponents to cause him to forget who he was. He took these same words in Mark chapter 12 in, of Psalm 118 and ascribed them to himself, the stone that the 
builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone in his darkest hours as he hang out on Calvary's cross Jesus looked like a stone that the builders had rejected he looked rejected and dejected oh but early Sunday morning God turned his situation around and raised him from the dead with all power in his hand oh child of God that's the hope of our faith that God can take can turn our situations around that when it seems like we are defeated God steps into our situations and reverses our predicament Paul said to the Corinthians thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ that no matter how bad our circumstances may look at any one given hour God has given us victory instead of defeat that's why I can boldly stand before you tonight and declare this is the day that the Lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it because we've seen over and over again how God has stepped in and turned things around uh, is that not friends a picture of what God did for black people in this country our forefathers and mothers did not come to this country on cruise ships no they came on slave ships they were sold as slaves as property torn away from family friends and loved ones treated as three-fifths of a person they had to face Jim Crow laws and voter uh, suppression and all of the ugly expressions of racism and here we are in the 21st century fighting those same battles we now face the new Jim Crow we face police brutality and uh, voter suppression and minimum minimum uh, uh, mandatory sentences and yet from rejects yet from the stones that the builders have rejected God has made of us preachers and teachers and doctors and lawyers and scientists and inventors and intellectuals and artists and uh, and, and, and 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 writers and and mayors and um, senators and governors and yes even a president because our God takes the stones that the builders rejected and made us the chief cornerstones God specializes in turning things around when you look back through the rear view mirror of your life can you look back and see how when you thought you wasn't gonna make it God stepped in and turned your situation around when the doors were closed in your face when the when the doctor said it was cancer when the marriage looked like it was over when your when your enemy said that had counted you out but God counted you back in friends our God specializes in turning things around so I am unapologetic when I say this is the day the Lord has made we ought to rejoice and be glad in it because our God specializes in turning our situations around I submit it's still the day when we ought to rejoice because this is the day to remember how God reversed our predicament but it's still the day to rejoice because this is the day to remember how God answered our prayer look at verse 25 uh, the people are singing they said save now I pray oh Lord oh Lord I pray send now prosperity this phrase is believed to have been a formula prayer that was prayed before the blessing would be pronounced in verse 26 uh, when you read verse 25 in the original Hebrew in the original Hebrew language Language, verse 25 has a repetitive flow about it in the Hebrew it reads like this please Yahweh save us please please Yahweh cause us to prosper please but by the first century days of Jesus that Hebrew statement had been reduced down to one word Hosanna let the church say Hosanna and Hosanna means save now Lord perhaps these worshiping Israelites remembered how God had heard the cries of their forefathers and mothers in Egypt and over in Babylon and now they cry out to God to save them from the, the, the the, the enemies and from the destruction that they quite possibly could face in the future so they cried out Hosanna save us now Lord and in verse 26 the writer indicates that God obviously heard
heard their prayer because he faithfully showed up as their savior. Listen to these words. They ought to sound familiar to you, New Testament believers. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The gospel writers use this passage as an acclamation to Jesus. Remember during his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. As he rode into Jerusalem, the crowd was throwing palm branches in his path. And guess what the crowd was singing while Jesus was riding into Jerusalem? They were singing from Psalm 118. They were singing, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, while these words were spoken not so much as a prayer to Jesus, but as an acclamation of praise to him, I submit that it really could have been their corporate prayer because Israel and the world needed to be saved. So they said, Hosanna, save now, Lord. Come here, let me ask you a question. Have you ever prayed a Hosanna prayer? Save me now, Lord. I don't have a month. I don't have a week. I don't even have an hour. I need you to step in right now. Hosanna, save now, Lord. If you haven't prayed a Hosanna prayer, th that's all right. Just keep living because one day you will. Oh, friend, life has a way of causing you to face situations that get completely out of your control. These are times, friends, when things are out of your hands, when you've got to learn how to put them in the hands of God because time will be of the essence and you don't have time to try to figure out some long cute prayer you just got to learn to pray a Hosanna prayer Hosanna save me now Lord but can I ask you another question have you ever witnessed God answer your Hosanna prayer your save now Lord prayer oh friends I'm a living witness that God will answer your prayer just in the nick of time when I passed it in Omaha Nebraska I remember our church was growing at such a rapid pace that we had obviously outgrown our facility and we needed to build a new, new and larger sanctuary. And of course we had applied for a loan at one of the local banks, but the banks was making us jump through all kind of hoops. And all I wanted them to do was say, come on man, and say, yes, uh, we approve your loan. But they kept giving us to run around. And I remember one day when I was in my car, I was on Dodge Street at the corner of 30th and Dodge. If you ever been to Omaha, Dodge Street is the main thoroughfare that run all the way through the city from east to west. I was at 30th and Dodge and I was frustrated and I prayed a prayer of frustration. Can I tell you something? Sometimes your best prayer a frustrated prayer. Prayers of frustration. I prayed at 30th and Dodge. I was heading west uh, if you will. I said, Lord, will you touch the, the hearts of these bankers so they'll stop giving us to run around and, and, and God cause them to, to, to approve our loan. I, 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 I kid you not. By the time I got to 60th and Dodge, just 30 blocks later, I, my phone rang and it was the banker saying, we approve your loan. Uh, in, in, in the space that it took me time to determine took me to drive 30 blocks less than two miles God had answered my prayer I didn't know it at the time like I know it now but I was praying a Hosanna prayer save now Lord and God answered in less than 30 blocks do I have a witness Dottie Peoples was right when she said he's an on time God Yes, he is. He may not come when you want him to come, but he'll be there right on time. So I am unapologetic when I stand before you today to say it's still the day when we ought to say this is the day the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it because we can look back over our lives at time and time again when God answered our prayers just in the nick of time but I lest I keep you too long I submit to you lastly that it's still the day when we ought to rejoice when we ought to give God praise when we ought to rejoice because lastly this is the day to remember God deserves our praise uh, look at verse 27 the priests are now singing their part God is the Lord and he has given us light bind the sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar the priests are singing their part and remind the people that God has shown his favor on them. He said he has given us light. Now when the scripture speaks of uh, God's light, 
shining on God's people. That is a metaphor for the favor of God. Uh, the ironic prayer, the ironic benediction, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you when the shining face of God that's an anthropomorphic metaphor for the favor of God can somebody shout favor I don't know about you child of God but I, I, I've learned in this life of mine that sometimes I'd rather have God's favor than to have a pocket full of money because you can have a pocket full of money and no doors will open for you but you can be broke and don't have a dime but if you got favor you can make one phone call and doors will begin to open somebody shout favor they said God has shown his favor on us because he's shown he's caused his light to shine on us. And since that is the case, they said, we ought to praise God. How do we praise God? They said, bind the sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. Now, this is a difficult passage in the Hebrew. The NIV, the New International Version, I believe, has a more readable and understandable translation. The NIV reads this verse like this, with bowls in hand b-o-u-g-h-s with tree branches bowls in hand because they use tree branches during the festivities of the feast of tabernacles with tree branches in hand uh, join in the festal uh, procession up to the horns of the altar in other words they are now inviting the people to dance in a ceremonial dance around the altar and the king who is the chief liturgist is leading the people in in verse 28 as he sings his part as they danced around the altar the king said you are my God and I will praise you you are my God and I will exalt you now this praising and dancing during the feast of tabernacle was their proper response to the to to their ability to remember God's faithfulness in their lives whatever else praise is praise ought to always be our response to God's faithfulness based on our ability to remember what God has done for us. May we never lose sight of this basic truth uh, friends uh, that, that God deserves to be praised. The basic truth is that as long as breath remains in our bodies we ought to praise God. Do I have a witness here? The psalmist said in Psalm 150 let everything that has breath praise the Lord. The the prerequisite for praise is breath. If you have breath in your body, you ought to praise God. Now, as I've told you, that this praising and this dancing that Israel did on the, at the Feast of Tabernacles was to be done antiphonally. That one choir was to sing their part, but the other choir was to answer back singing their part. They were to sing antiphonal praise. Ah, uh, and what, uh, what better description Description of true praise than, and, uh, than that kind of antiphonal praise. Each group was required to sing their own part. The priests sang their part. The king sang his part. And the people sang their part. No group could sing the other group's part. No. Each group had to sing their own part. Do I have a witness here? So that when other people give their reason for praising God... The question that I ask is tonight is, can you sing your part? But can you sing your part even when circumstances are not ideal? When the, when, when you, when the doctor says it's cancer, can you sing your part? When your marriage is in trouble, can you sing your part? When your children are acting up, can you sing your part? When your money is funny and your change is strange, can you sing your part? Now you can't sing my part and I can't sing your part. No, we got to state our own reasons why we praise God. Do I have a witness here? Well, a few years ago, one of the faithful members of our church who was an usher at our church, faithfully serving the Lord, but she developed cancer. Cancer spread from her breast to all over, just, to, uh, just about all over her body, but she was faithful, even up to a couple of weeks before she finally succumbed to cancer. She would come to church every Sunday with tubes hanging out of her body where they were still feeding her the chemo but she would stand faithfully and had a post on the door and one Sunday a couple of weeks before she died while she was at the door standing on her post somebody said how are you doing and here was her answer she said not good 
but I'm here. It was her way of shouting back, antiphonally, shouting back against the hellishness of life that this cancer is not going to stop me from serving God. This is the day that the Lord has made. We, we, I will rejoice and be glad in it. My brothers and sisters, that day has not changed. It's still the day when we ought to rejoice. But I can hear some of you thinking out loud right now, he doesn't know what I'm going through. That's easy for him to say. He don't know the pressure I'm under just to get to church today. And you are right, I don't know what you're going through, but I, what I do know is this, that it don't matter whatever you're going through, you still ought to give God praise because it, it, the saying is true, it's not what happens to you, but how you respond to what happens to you that makes all the difference. You can hold your head down in shame and self-pity and invite everybody to come to your pity party, or you can declare your antiphonal response against the hellishness of your situation. This is still the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You've got to learn to shout back at life and say, I know the burdens are heavy, but it's still the day. I know the nights are dark, but it's still the day. I know that trouble is on every hand, but it's still the day. I know I've got tr I got problems uh, uh, everywhere I turn, but it's still the day. We face injustice in this country, but it's still the day. Regardless of who wins the elections or who's in the White House, it's still the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because every day is a day of thanksgiving. God's been good to us. Every day he's blessing us. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. Take the time to glorify the Lord today. Why? He keeps blessing me. Blessing me. Opening doors that I cannot see. So take the time to glorify the Lord today. But what will you tell the Lord in your circumstances? Hear what you ought to say. For every mountain you brought me over. For every trial you've seen me through. For every blessing hallelujah for this I give you praise because this is the day that the Lord has made we ought to rejoice and be glad in it it is still the day when we ought to give God praise let us pray father we thank you and praise you and bless you for this day and that despite our circumstances and on the darkest day of our lives, when we look back over our lives at how so many times you've reversed our situations and how so many times you've answered our prayers, how you've stepped in just in the nick of time, we have decided to shout back our antiphonal response to the vicissitudes of life and the hellishness of our situations. This is still the day that the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Even in the midst of pandemics, political unrest, racism, joblessness, and all of the other ills of the world, we still look up to you and shout back our antiphonal answer this is the day the lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it because you are worthy of our praise through jesus christ we pray lord have mercy does anybody know this is still the day <laughs> that the Lord has made. And we've got reasons to rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you so much, Dr. Watson, for reminding us that this is still the day in spite of challenges and adversity, COVID-19 and all kinds of other upheavals. We are grateful that this is still the day and as a matter of fact for some it is a day that's much better than previous days just a week ago 
And so we are grateful to God for what he continues to do to remind us of the Lord's faithfulness and the reasons that the Lord gives us to worship and to praise his holy name. Perhaps you're not a Christian, but you want to become one. I want you to know this is not only the day, but this is your day that the Lord has made. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Harden not your heart. And so I encourage you now to open up your heart. The Bible says all you have to do to become a Christian is simply confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the grave. And the Bible says you'll be saved. And so if you've never entered into a personal relationship with God, but you want to do so right now, you can just simply pray, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I believe that you are God's son. You died on the cross for my sins and you rose from the grave for my victory. Be my savior and be my Lord. If you prayed that prayer, guess what? You're a new person. You are no longer who you were because the Bible says if anyone is in Christ Jesus, they are a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things have become brand new. Send us an email and let us know that you have accepted Jesus Christ. We want to help you with the next steps in your Christian journey. If you're a Christian, but you don't have a church home where you're growing and active, we want you to take this time and to participate in decision making. You need a church home. You need a church to which you are connected. And so I encourage you on your Christian experience to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And if the Spirit is leading you to become a part of our church fellowship, no matter where you are in the world, we are a local and a global church. And we'd love to have you as a part of our family. In either case, you can send us an email, join at mcbcfs.org to let us know that you gave your life to Christ or that you are a Christian and have chosen to become a part of our church family. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We'll respond to you within 24 hours to let you know how excited we are to have you as a part of the Mount Calvary Church. Well, it's time to worship God through giving. Hallelujah. The Bible says that give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. That can be true about judgment and about bad things, but that can also be true about good things and about giving. And we apply it to giving on this occasion that God will bless you when you give. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will God cause people to bless your life. And so tonight, on our final night of revival, we give as an act of worship. I have asked all of our members and our friends that join us this week to give at least $50 as their offering to support this revival. And thank you who have done it already. I'm so grateful and the Lord will bless you for it. And those of you who have not, I want to encourage you to do it tonight and to participate by giving your $50. If you don't have it, then give what you have. If you have more and the Lord has blessed you in that way and the word has blessed you in that way, then I encourage you to give more. You can give by way of Givelify. You can give by way of our website. And if you're going to mail your offerings in along with your regular tithes and offering, then make sure that you mark revival on your envelope so that we can make sure that we uh, credit you with giving to the revival as you desire. God bless you. Thank you for your generosity. God will be generous to you because you've been generous to his work in the kingdom through the Mount Calvary Church. Amen. Let me bless you right quick. Father, thank you so much for the blessing of giving. Thank you, God, that it is indeed more blessed to give than it is to receive. But God, we like both and we like to give and we like to receive. And your word says that we can have both, that we can give and we can receive. As a matter of fact, you call it the law of sowing and reaping. And so I pray in Jesus name that your people will sow and I pray that your people will reap. And I pray, oh God, that the reaping will be greater than the sowing and that you, oh God, will advance your kingdom and that you, oh God, will bless your people with not only the necessities of life, but with 
with many of the desires of their hearts. And God will give you thanks. Continue to bless Dr. Watson to preach your word as he has fed us. May you feed his soul and then may you bless his life materially and relationally, pastorally, personally, and in any way that he stands in need. We give you thanks even now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And thank God. Here at Mount Calvary, we have several ways to give. Number one, visit our website, mcbcfs.org, and click the Ways to Give graphic on our banner. Enter your information and give. Number two, use the Givelify app, search for Mount Calvary in Fairfield, California, select the amount, and give. Number three, mail it to us. Simply place your contributions in the envelope and mail it to Mount Calvary Baptist Church, 1735 Enterprise Drive, Building 3, Fairfield, California, 94533. Need to make other arrangements? Give us a call at 707-425-1849. Whether you visit the website, use the Givelify app, or place your contributions in the mail, it's easy to give. Well, let me thank you so much for joining in with us for these three nights, whether you were with us for one night, two nights, or three nights, thank you for tuning in at all. And I pray, I trust, I believe that you had to have been blessed if you tuned in at all. I don't just simply select preachers who are friends. I pray and ask God to lead me about who it is that he would have to share a word with us that we need during a particular season. And so I am confident because I was blessed that you were blessed as well by the proclamation of the gospel by each of these giants of the gospel, Reverend Dr. Jerry M. Carter, Reverend Dr. Maurice Watson, and Reverend Dr. William Houston Curtis. We give thanks for all of them. We give thanks for the music that has been shared with us and how we've been able to worship the Lord and sing unto him songs of praise and worship and thanksgiving that paved the way for the time in the word and we look forward to how the Lord will give us the energy that we need to be able to finish out 2020 so that when we come into 2021, that no matter how much longer we have to deal with some of the challenges of this global pandemic, that it won't be, in the words of my grandmama, as long as it has been. In other words, that he's going to do it and we just need to just watch him work and it will all be worth it that we persevered in our faith and we'll be able to gather again in person at the appropriate time. God bless you. Love you much. Mount Calvary and friends, thank you so much for joining us this week and everyone on staff, everyone that's a part of our music team and these preachers as well for sharing with us in a dynamic way. Well, would you lift your hands? I want to bless you as we conclude our revival with the ironic priestly blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace from this time forth and even forevermore until we reach that land beyond sun, moon, and stars where the sun never goes up and the sun never goes down. For the Lamb himself is the light of the city. May you go revived in your soul to do great things for your God as your God does great things for you. Amen. Grace and peace. See you on Sunday. Bless you.